another day of riding with the boss. Not a lot of stuff to do. Still trying to make Jacob, uh, I guess, get his feet wet in the industry and not rely on either me or him unless it's something dire. So let's see how today goes, sir. Yeah. You ready? Oh, yeah. No, you're not. Ah, first call we got right now where we diagnosed this yesterday at the very end of the day uh the problem with the control board he was re he's removing right now the little molex plug piece was wiggling in there and its connection and kind of losing the signal going to the board and intermittently it would say that the main limit switch was tripping but we tested it yesterday with the system running and it was never losing 24 volts across it. So diagnose that as a bad board and we'll get this swapped out soon. You what'd you have for dinner last night, buddy? Nothing. You didn't eat nothing? Oh, that's right, you on the diet. I don't think you're fat. All right, board's working fine now. It's sending voltage where we needed to, but now, even though the induced draft motor was running yesterday, it was running at a bad noise, like it was kind of screeching and everything, but it was still running. We didn't bother to test it. That's, I guess that's our fault, uh, but it's it's locked up today. It, it won't run. So just to... I can... It's not really any play to it. It's just sticking. So, boss man's on his way to go ahead and take care of that. Pick it up at the supply house. I'm going to double check everything over here now. Capacitors. I'm about to take the flame sensor off and clean it. Try to get some of this debris and everything out of here and go from there. Duck work doesn't seem too bad. Right there. Coil's not half bad at all. Ugh. Inside of there doesn't look too dirty at all. All the capacitors are fine. Flame sensor was fairly charred, but I didn't use sandpaper. I don't have any. And the last time I used some, somebody kind of grilled me in the comments about it, so... Until this fails me, I guess I'll just keep trying to use this. But we're dealing with a 2001 gas package unit. As long as we can get this thing back up and running, we're just going to let it rock. But it's still mind-boggling to me at how aside from the eerie noise that it was making yesterday and we had the unit off um aside from the eerie noise i just wonder if it just sitting and not even trying to run is what kind of killed it in this short time span but <sighs> boss man is definitely not happy about this He's so over the service call. <laughs> I heard it all in the truck on the way here. Because the first issue that we had with this getting the board, um, I called the supply house. I gave them the part number of the original board and told them the serial number for this unit. And they still ended up giving us a control board that didn't even have the piece for the igniter. And like a instead of this 9-pin Molex, it gave us a 6-pin um, all the other terminals seemed to line up, but it just, it just was not right. So then we had to go to another supply house, get the correct board that is now installed. Just to find out we had 240 going to this inducer now and it still ain't working. So you win some, you lose some. He's not happy, but as, as the saying goes, shit happens. We're here now and we can fix it, so.
Ready for me to power it up? Oh, yeah. Why is there fucking three wires? Don't pull it, but don't oh, pull it up. Uh, oh, okay. So we need one drum bike. Don't burn out another induced draft motor. Huh. Remember, uh, Jacob did when he, when he put all three wires to the contactor. Crank that. Crank that soldier boy. Oh, oh that sounds a lot better. That issue it was yesterday. Stamp of approval. Give me a thumbs up. We're good. We're good. The whole new unit. Let's see what's wrong with this one. Customer states the unit wasn't doing nothing. Now it's doing everything. That looks like the same OEM board we just took off that other unit. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to state something here. This capacitor has leaked out some oil. You don't think it was that one?
me when I was here last time, all I did was clean the flame sensor. And it don't look dirty now. I can't get the camera to zoom on it, but it don't look dirty now. like this. Alright, let's see what we got. Sir, do you mind if I go inside and check the thermostat real quick? Alright. Yes, sir, I do remember. I guess I got it open. <laughs> Here's the light. Oh, it was off. All right, we put it to 69. Let's see what happens. Go back out there. It was off. It was? It was off. Fan said the auto. What was it? 57. He keeps it set at 69. Alright. Well, we sat in front of that unit. Evap coil is clean. The system never tripped back out. What do you think it could be? Don't know. Don't make guesses. Just wait till I see something. So you ain't no parts changer, right? Nope. We are service technicians. Mm -hmm. Not sales technicians. Yes, yeah, sir. I've come to realize when I'm just when I'm the helper role, I learn a lot from you. I thank Lenny for that. Lenny used to tell me to shut the hell up a lot. Not because I was like thinking I was a know-it-all, just because I'd ask him 50 million questions. <laughs> ah, I thought we were done with these units. I'm tired of looking at these package units. Oh, man. You smell gas yet? Oh, he smelled gas on the gas system when it was on. Well, let's see if we can get it to do it while it's here. Oh, while we're waiting for the owner of this property to get here so we can double check the thermostat and everything inside, somebody let me know what they, what is their method for diagnosing a system or trying to figure out what could be the problem on a system that... When you arrive there, there's nothing really wrong. Um, I was always taught to just double check safeties, um, you know, double check your flame sensor, make sure the if you've got a spark igniter that it's not too uh, covered in soot and everything. I, I hate to be that, sir. I hate when those type of service calls come in. I know a lot of people probably hate them, too, because, you know, at some point you're just going to get called back. Um yeah, I don't I don't know what else we could have checked on that one. Um to try to figure out what would have been wrong, but hopefully if it does go out this time the customer will leave the thermostat in the heat position and the system will stay uh tripped in whatever fault code it'll give us. So that's it for that one. But on to this unit now. I'm gonna see if I can diagnose this a little bit before they get before he gets back over here. So the issue with this right now 
I've got this system calling for heat right here at the thermostat. For some reason, or not at the thermostat, but right here just at the wiring. But they don't have white hooked up, so I wonder if white's hooked up inside. But for now, we'll just leave it like this. I'm going to check to see if the induced draft motor is even getting 240 to it. Take out this wire and this one and double check here to there. Well, at this point in time, the board's only sending 9.6 volts to the. Huh? Did you just have it running? No, I just tried to check to see if the voltage was coming out of the board. It is a code. It is a code? All right. So I was going to say I only got, uh, only got nine something, 9.8 volts. What are you, coming in? Zero. I got zero. 240. Let me put this stuff, plug it back up and see what happens. Oh, okay. Put this in. Gas is locked out at the meter. Okay. Is there a meter lock on it, like from the utility company? I mean, I, what are we supposed to do with that one? Doesn't make any sense. You want me to just double check safeties and shit? Clean the flame sensor, things of that nature? Uh, Alright. Great. Sure, a lot of people run into that situation too. No utilities on, but they want us to try to figure out what's wrong. Oh, okay. Well, that's gonna need a new wire nut, and so is the other one. I'm not going to say how we got the gas on, but the gas is on. None of my business as to how or why. I don't really smell gas. I just smell hot metal. I mean, I mean it's, it's a rough smell, but it doesn't smell like just straight natural gas. And plus it's getting put out the exhaust, so I don't know. I, I don't think we have a gas leak detector on the on the truck. Just the refrigerant leak detector. This is where I get to see him in action. See what he does. Oh, you do have a bottle of it. Yeah, my pink bottle is going all the way out. I Yeah, I mean, I smell something, but it doesn't necessarily smell like fucking 
Yeah. Like raw gas. That doesn't smell the same to me as when you leave, like, you know, the if you left the valve open and you just smell what was coming out of it. Nose is burning. I don't see any bubbles on the back side. I got a dumbass question. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. I was gonna say, could, could we, what if they, could you get a bad smell coming out if this wasn't sealed properly? What? The induce area, like where it mounts to the back? Could that allow some gases to, to come out and smell rougher than what they are? Just a dumb thought, just a dumb thought. There is some escaping gas back here. I can kind of see the steam a little bit through there. That's hot right here. No, 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 no. It's, it's escaping out the back side of the exchanger. Just a little bit though. This one's weird. I don't mean to be very quick with the videos and kind of choppy with them running on low battery life right now. But he was playing with I wasn't able to catch it on video real quick. He was playing with the with the gas valve, like out the shutoff valve trying to see if it made a very big difference in the flame which it is so head into the truck right now to grab the uh, field piece manometer 
and see what we can find with that. You sure you were zeroed out? Well, boss man is going to take care of something real quick over the phone. He wanted me to take apart the unit to get to the heat exchanger. God, they don't make it easy on this unit. I don't know if those are necessarily cracks, but you can see some minimal what looks to be like gaps in it. Like the rust is, is just corroding it. But... I don't know how that would push gas back out towards us to where we could smell it outside. I don't know. I'm a little bit confused. I've never seen a joint like that on a heat exchanger either. Oh, this thing is terrible. I don't know. Is there anything back on the back side of these? Nothing that I can see with the camera. And nothing right here looks too off out of the ordinary. But those, those right there worry me. I'm going to let him know about that. Hole number one. And hole number two with a crack here. It's got a nice little hairline. Right next to it. But could that be what's causing the smell coming back at us? I mean, because that gas valve and that inducer both look kind of new. So we found a issue, just not the issue. But how old is this bit? Two thousand and four? I think that's a four. I think it was. What? The only thing running is the blower motor. Ooh. And you saw no flame that's back, right? Serious. Huh? When the flames were rolling, you saw no flame. Yeah, back, there was right? no flame back on yeah, that at that's all. That's what I can't look for, but. But it. Even there. when the blower kicked on. I mean that 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 second one from the top is definitely blowing out harder than any other. Up oh, that bottom one too. That the bottom one was the one that was looking like a vortex. <laughs> that one what about this top one. Let me know. And not that bad. All right, you got that yellow wire. Bad heat exchanger. Thank God we were able to. Don't don't worry about that. We did that because we got tired of the fumes blowing down in our faces while we were down there. So we'll flip that around when before we leave. Take that.